This video is about how to save spatial data that we've created in R and write it out to the kinds of files that we've been loading in. So once we've done some work to create new spatial data in R, for example, uh, after cropping some data to the sizes and positions that we need, we want a way to be able to save that so that we can both load it again later or share it with other people. And we're going to start where we left off at the end of the last lesson on cropping with code that has already loaded uh, the packages we need, loaded the Harvard boundary, digital terrain model, and soils data, cropped the digital terrain model uh, to just fit uh, within the uh, boundary layer and also created two small crops of the digital terrain model and the soils data, uh, capturing just the data from this spot uh, right here in Harvard Forest. So to save this data, we are going to write it out to our computer uh, using, and we do that using the write versions of the read functions that we've been using so far. And so if we want to save the digital terrain model that was cropped to the Harvard forest boundary, we would use the write stars function so that's like we've been using read stars to read stars data in. We're going to use write stars to write stars data out. And this function takes two arguments. The first is the stars object that we want to save, that we want to write out. And so in this case, that's harv underscore dtm underscore cropped. That's this uh, DTM right here. And then the second argument is the file name that we want to save it to and the format that the spatial object gets saved in will be determined by the extension on the file name. So we'll call this harv underscore DTM underscore cropped and then a dot and then for our extension, we'll save this out as a geotiff. That's what we've been working with so far. And so if we put dot tif on the end, it will know to save it in the geotiff format. And so if we run this uh, and go back to the files directory, we'll see that out here in our the root of our project, because I didn't specify any additional path information, we have a new uh, piece of raster data called harv underscore dtm underscore cropped dot tiff. And we can see that we can read it back in by running read stars harv dtm cropped dot tiff. I forgot my quotes. And we can see that we've reloaded our object and we can see that it's the cropped version because, because both X and Y uh, don't go up to 150. So it's this reduced uh, sized image. We can also write out vector data. And again, we're gonna use the write version of the read function we've been using. So we've been using stread to read in our simple features vector data. And so we use stwrite to write out simple features vector data. And it takes the same pair of arguments, the name of the spatial object that we want to write to a file. And so in this case, we'll use harv underscore soils underscore small so that's our cropped uh, vector data. And then the second argument in quotes is the name of the file that we want to write it to, including the extension that will indicate 
the file type. And so we'll call this harv soils small dot shp to indicate a shape file. And if we run this uh, and look over here, uh, we can see that we now have uh, a full set of the files that go into making up a shapefile. Remember, a shapefile is made up of a bunch of similarly named files uh, with different extensions, and they're all there. So that's the basic idea behind how we save or write out geospatial data that we've created using the SF and STARS packages. We use the equivalent write functions to the read functions that we've been using. So that's write underscore stars for raster data and st underscore write for vector data. And both of those functions take two arguments, the first of which is the name of the object that we want to write, and the second is the name of the file name, including the extension that indicates what type of data format we want to save the data into. And this will write it out as a shape file. That's what we've been working with so far. And maybe I hadn't actually managed to run this code yet in this example. Checkity check, check, checkity check, check, checkity check, check, checkity check.